and do what he says. Amen? Uh, amen. It's, it's God's word and he knows the heart of his people. And uh, he can bless us if we uh, follow what he says. Amen? So let us stand to read Psalms uh, 24 and just verse 7 and 8. And then we want to read uh, John 14, verse 1 and 6. Can we do that, please? And I will read those uh, particular verses. Psalms 24, 7 and 8 says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Amen. And then we want to read... Uh, John chapter 14, verse 1 through 6. And this particular verse says, uh, Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I... Go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know. And ye know the, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and now, and how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So reads the word of God. And uh, you may take your seat in the presence of the Lord. And we want to talk about uh, what we said on last week, the cure for a troubled heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. The cure for a troubled heart. Mm -hmm. I remember, as I said on last week, that Al Green sang a song, How Can You Mend a Broken Heart? But I would like to piggyback on the thought that uh, Pastor DeGraffa Reed mentioned in his prayer concerning being content. Amen. Mm -hmm how to have a contented heart, amen, because that's what this sermon is all about. In other words, no matter what we're going through, no matter how troubled our heart is, that God has the ability to help us to overcome our troubles. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. amen. As a matter of fact, as we live in this life, we will have trouble. Uh, the scripture said in Job 14.1, a man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulation. Mm -hmm. And basically what he was seeking to suggest is that in the world we'll have trouble. But the good news is, as he added on to that passage of scripture, he said, but to be of good cheer, mm -hmm. for I have overcome the world. And you know, I was reading in my devotion this morning, uh, Sister Cheryl, and I found out that there's a passage in uh, Psalms 143 mm -hmm. and verse 11. And the psalmist says, Oh, bring my soul out of trouble. Amen. <laughs> Which tells to us that we will go through trouble. The longer we live, the older we get. And the older we get, the longer we live. And as we live, we will have trouble sometime. Oh, yeah. Amen. Trouble will knock at your door. And trouble will slide down your chimney. And trouble will call you on the phone. We will have trouble. But the good news is that God is our refuge, hallelujah, and strength, huh? A very present help, what? In times of trouble. Hallelujah. Have I got a witness? You, are you going to pray with me? The psalmist says when you have trouble, the place to look, amen, is to look to the Lord. I'm just going to lift this verse for a little bit because we're going to have the Lord's supper, amen. So come on and go with me right quick, amen. Uh, the place to look is to look to the Lord because he's got the power, he's got the strength, and he's got the might. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Mm -hmm. And so the psalmist encourages us when we have trouble. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Because the first thing that goes is our heads. You know, mm -hmm. when we have trouble, we're all bowed down. Amen. Mm -hmm. Our count is all sad. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're all depressed, discouraged, despondent, Full of, full of disillusion and despair. Because the trouble overwhelms us. The psalmist says it, it comes all over my soul. 
But the good news is that we need to look to the Lord. Not loose living, not liquor, not lustful lifestyle, but that we need to lift up our heads. Mm -hmm. Good God Almighty. And I said on last week, Pastor DeGraffery, yeah. that we need to shake ourselves. Amen. Mm -hmm. Shake yourself. Amen. You, you, you know, when you're having trouble, just shake yourself and uh, shake your head because this is the first part, the first principle, our foreheads that are bowed down and the first part, the chiefest part of us, that are messed up. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. And so the writer in the psalmist said, he said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, huh? And be what? Lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And he says, what? The king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? And then he says, he answers his own question. He said, the Lord mighty in battle. <laughs> Have I got a witness? Amen. And so I'm seeking to suggest that your trouble is not more mighty than God who is able to help us to overcome. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. The psalmist says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be lifted up the everlasting doors. And what he's saying, he says, he wants us to lift up our heads with a call. Amen. So that uh, we can get our minds and our hearts and our focus on the Lord. You know, the psalmist says, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. The Lord can make your path brighter. The Lord can make our burdens lighter. Have I got a witness? The Lord can give us joy in a place of sorrow. The Lord can give us hope for a better tomorrow. And so I want you to lift up your heads. Oh, ye gates. Hallelujah. If you don't get nothing out of this sermon, just get down. Yeah. Uh, lift up your heads, oh, ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory, hallelujah, shall come in. Who is? Huh? You ought to ask oh. yourself, because if God can't do it, it's, 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 if God can't do it, it can't be done. Mm -hmm. and so he said, the psalmist kept repeating himself. He, he kept repeating, he said, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Huh? And be ye what? Lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come. Now listen, the key to the gate is we must let the king take control. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. And there are four principles I want to walk through quickly. And then we want to go over to John 14, 6. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we're going to lift our three words out of that particular verse mm -hmm. for today. But the three principles we talked about on, four principles we talked about on last Sunday, is that the first thing we need to do is to surrender to the Lord. Mm -hmm. We talked about it in the context of 1 Peter 5, 8, which says, cast all our cares on him, amen, for he careth for us. You, you remember we said that? And the, song, the songwriter teaches us, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his daily presence live. And so if I live in God's presence on a daily basis, he's going to make my heart content. Have I got a witness? He's going to give me this contentment that Pastor DeGraffery prayed about. Amen. In all things, I've learned to be content. Whether I have money or I don't have money. Amen. Whether I have food or I don't have food. Whether I have a wife or a husband or not. I am still going to be content. Amen. In all things, I'm going to be content because I'm content with Jesus. Have I got a witness? Oh, and so yeah. the writer teaches us that whatever our pearl, our problems, and our predicaments are, we ought to cast it on the Lord. For he what? Careth for us. Hallelujah. That's good news. And so whatever you're going through today, lift up your heads. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Hallelujah. I want when you go home, that's all you hear in your mind. Just resonate with you. When you get ready, put your head down. Because your trouble is overwhelming you. You want to lift up your head. <laughs> ye everlasting doors. Because the king. The king of glory shall come in. Who are we? <laughs> Hallelujah. To and so we want to surrender to Christ. Have I got a witness? Amen. 
First Peter 5, 8. And then we want to depend upon God because He is able to sustain us. Amen. Psalms 3 and verse 5 suggest to us that when we surrender and uh, He's able to sustain us. Have I got a witness? But then He's also able to stabilize us. Huh? First Peter 5, 10. He's our stabilizing force. When you're going through trouble, you need to stabilize. Hmm. Amen. It's like an airplane. Once the stabilizer is gone, that plane is coming down. Well. <laughs> Have I got a, you're going to crash. And so we need God to stabilize us. He's our stabilizing force. Dr. Graham. Amen. I used to work on airplanes. Amen. Right out here on American Airlines. And one of the key components when they were putting all those avionics back and they would take those planes, and I used to go up to Sacramento because we used to touch land in Sacramento, just in Sacramento, it took about 15 minutes to get to Sacramento in, a, in one of these DC-10s. And I used to go up, you know, they had the stewardess and they had all the people, they were checking out the avionics and so forth, they'd give you, they'd give you lunch, you know, you you're acting like you're, you're actually flying. But the pilots would be test, test flighting, uh, uh, testing the, the planes after they would have rearranged the whole thing, the, the, the whole body, the, the wings, the, 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 the wheels, and, and, and they would take me up, and I was like, praise God, I'm going for lunch, I'm going to put in a plane, amen, you know, while I'm working, amen, and uh, I just have a hallelujah time, the this would come around just like you're flying, amen, but be, I'd be actually working. And uh, one of the things they make sure is that the stabilizers would be working, amen? Mm -hmm. Because they want to make sure that when that plane takes off and lands, that you're going to be stable, amen? And God is our stabilizer. Amen. Hallelujah amen. to them. He stabilizes them. When we feel like rocking and when we're rocking and rolling, he's the one that just keeps us going smooth, brother. Mm -hmm. He just helps us to fly, if you will, amen? amen. When we want to crash, amen? Because sometimes the trouble comes so much and it comes so bad that it makes us want to crash. Mm -hmm. Amen. There was just one young man last week, we said on last week, right here, here in Goleta. Mm -hmm. He was walking on the railroad tracks, mm -hmm. had his back to the train. Mm -hmm. And you know what happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they later found out that uh, he committed uh, suicide. Mm -hmm. But uh, God, when you, have, when you have this mighty God, huh, mm -hmm. this King of Kings and Lord of He stabilizes you. Hallelujah to the Lord. I feel my help today. Hmm. And then not only that, you can surrender to Christ. He's able to sustain you. He's able to stabilize you. But he's able to strengthen you in the midst of your troubles. Hmm. And that's what the psalmist said. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Huh? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is what? The strength of my life. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so he can give us help. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to touch on today. Huh? Mm -hmm. He can give us help. He can give us hope. And then he can help us that we might ultimately get to our eternal home. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. Now listen to me. The verse that we talked about in John said that uh, let not your heart be troubled you believe in me, believe, believe in God, believe also in me. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So when you believe in God, that's Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And then Jesus, he said, believe also in me. And this is Jesus that's saying this. Mm -hmm. So he says, you've got God who's Jehovah, but you also have Elohim working on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Good God of mine. Uh, have I got a witness? And, and so you've got these two ex existing powers that are operating on your behalf. You've got Jehovah, hallelujah, the one that can guide and guard and govern us. Have I got a witness? Then you've got Jesus, who is Elohim, the one that can defend, develop, and direct us in the midst of our troubles. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Isn't that good news? He said, if you believe in God, huh? Believe also. So you want to believe in both. Because you, when you believe in both, you have both of these powers operating on your behalf. Now listen, I found this morning, amen, I'll just drop these three words on you that I found this morning that I want to quickly share with you because we've got to do the Lord's Supper. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, listen to me now. Listen to me now, when you have trouble, he says, I am the way 
that can help you out of your trouble. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness? Because he said, don't do it your way. Don't be like Elvis Presley that said, I did it my way. Do it God's way. Do it Jesus' way. He said, I am the way. Because there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death and destruction. But he said, if you do it my way, let me lead you. Let me guide you. Let me defend. Let me direct you. You know, the psalm, the psalm is, uh, 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 Proverbs teaches us in Proverbs 3, 5. He says, uh, if, you let, if you acknowledge me, huh, in all of your ways. Didn't, didn't that what Proverbs 3, 5 says? Then I will direct your path. Mm -hmm. Don't try to do it God your way. Do it God. You've already tried your way. Mm -hmm. And your way did not work. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, I am the straight as the gate or broad as the way. Huh? Mm -hmm. That leadeth to destruction. Mm -hmm. But he says, but straight is the gate that leadeth unto life. Mm -hmm. And just a few there be. Hallelujah. <laughs> that find it. So what I'm seeking to suggest when you have trouble, look to Jesus. He is the way. And you know, ever since I've let Jesus come into my life, things have, I have had a, what I call a dynamic and a demonstrative difference in my life. I have had some stability in my life. Because prior to coming to Santa Barbara, I was moving from one place to the next. Huh? And I moved like in three months. I was moving different, having different jobs. But ever since I let Jesus Christ come into my life, He has stabilized. Good God of mine. Huh? I, I, things are not the way they should be, but thank God they're not the way they used to be. Amen. Since Jesus, Hallelujah, came in to my life, and so He says, He said, Jesus said, I am the way. But not only that, he says, I am the way, the truth. Good God, that's the other one. So we're dealing with the way and the truth. Huh? And his truth can what? Set us free. And who the Son has set free. Hallelujah. <laughs> Is free indeed. Yes, sir. And you know, I love that word by James Lowell, and it's, it's becoming a famous quotation, quotation of mine. James Lowell, he said, truth forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. Yet that scaffold slays the future, and behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadows, huh? Hmm. Keeping watch over his own. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And who the Son has set free is free indeed. And so Jesus said, I not only know the way that you should live, but I know the way, the truthful way that you ought to live. Mm -hmm. And my truth is the real truth. Nothing but the truth. Huh? So help me God. That's what we're experiencing today when we're listening to God's word. His truth is able to, to, to set us free. But his truth is able to be like a light onto our feet. Huh? Mm -hmm. a, a lamp onto our feet and a light onto our path. Mm -hmm. So that when we're starting to go off track, if you will... Or, or we're experiencing the trouble. He's the truth, amen. He, he's the one that's, that's going to be like that ping in the ocean in Malaysia when they're looking for that airline over in Australia. He's going to be the ping that they're going to hit, amen. Right. That'll tell them where that airplane is. Have I got a witness, amen. He's the truth, I tell you. And when they start depending on his truth, then they'll know where that plane is, amen. Because he'll show them the way and the truth. But good, the good news is he's not only the way, he's not only the truth, but what? He is the life. Good God Almighty. In him was the life. And the life was the light of men. Have I got a witness? Yeah. He is the life, I tell you. He has come to give us life and to give it to us what? More abundantly. He's come to give us a qualitative and a quantitative life. Mm -hmm. And I praise God for the life of Jesus. He has given me life. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. And not only the life here on earth. Hallelujah. And that's what Pastor Gregory touched on it a little bit. When he was praying, I was like, brother, this brother must know my sermon today. 
Because he talked about heaven. Amen. And that's what Jesus said. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. See, see, when you're troubled, sometimes you can only think about what's going on here on earth. And sometimes we can be so early minded, we're not going to be any heavenly good. Right. Have I got a witness? Amen. But, but, but Christ wants us to know that when you're troubled, just don't think about what's happening here on earth. He wants us to know that we ought to think about the possibility of what the life is going to be when we get over on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Because he said, in my Father's house, yeah. right here in this passage here, hallelujah, in my Father's house, yeah. there are many mansions. And he says, if I go, I'll go and prepare a place for you that where I am, hallelujah, I, ye shall be also, and I was sharing with a young man the other day about the Jehovah's Witness, where they're believing that the kingdom of God is going to come here on earth, particularly because they use that verse in the, in the Lord's Prayer to justify that position, where Jesus said, uh, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. But when you look at this particular passage, Sister Vines, Jesus is talking about preparing a mansion, not here on earth, but in heaven, he said, where I am, ye may be also. He's not here right now in the sense of building a mansion for me down here. Mm -hmm. I believe he's building my mansion, building a mansion for Sister Vines, amen, mm -hmm. where I'll be going over and visiting her in my mansion. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. He said, where I am, ye may be also. Mm -hmm. He said, and if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. He's not here right now. In the sense of building a mansion for us. Mm -hmm. He's working on that mansion over there. Mm -hmm. Where the streets are paved with gold. Mm -hmm. Where we'll find rest for our soul. Mm -hmm. or where the wicked shall cease from troubling. And the weary shall be at rest. In my new book, Pastor DeGraff will read. I talk about uh, uh, how to live like precious stones. Mm -hmm. And when we get to... Amen. Heaven. Amen. We'll experience all those yeah, gems. Yeah, the yeah. Coal, the coal. We'll experience those uh, burl and mm -hmm. topaz and mm -hmm. emerald mm -hmm. and sardonyx and, mm -hmm. and the streets again. The pain is gold, I'll tell you. Right. I'm looking forward to that day. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. That's what this thing is all about. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I want to see all those gems, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. DeGraffery. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh, it, it, it says, uh, and I saw, John said, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. There'll be no more, well, no pain, no more suffering. There'll be joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what I'm looking for. So I'll be done with the troubles of this world. I'm going home to be with God. So lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Stephen said, Dad, you get too loud, but I can't help it when I get excited. He, he, says, he said, Dad, he said, Dad, you just get too loud, Dad. He, he, he don't quite understand that yet. You see. Amen. And he said, Dad, sometimes you ought to cut out, you ought to cut, cut, cut out some of these silly sayings you've got. Well, when you're going through, you don't want to nurse it, you don't want to curse it, you don't want to rehearse it, you don't want to disperse it, and God will reverse it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah to that. We better get ready for the Lord's Supper. Because I'm gonna lose myself if we don't do that. Amen. Don't nurse it. Amen. When you're going through, don't nurse it. Don't curse it. Don't rehearse it. Don't disperse it. And God will. God will reverse it. And sometimes, you know, when you're troubled, you're just sitting there moaning and groaning, whining and dying. Huh? You reverse it. And you nurse it. Don't do that. Don't nurse it. If you're going through trouble, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be what? Ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. And the psalmist asked the question, who is this king of glory? Huh? The Lord mighty in battle. He is. He is the king of glory. I told you last week about this movie Noah. And I know some of you have talked about going to see it. And I don't want to break it for you. But you can't listen to what Hollywood got to say. 
you got to listen to what God has to say. Amen. Because when you listen to Hollywood, since the time, they have a way of mixing up the scriptures with mess. They had no stone god that was helping Noah building that ark. Noah and his son were building that ark. And they had some stone, stone gods. They were even talking. Oh, what kind of mess is that? Huh? That's not in the word of God. They were, they were moving all the lumber and all this stuff, putting the, putting the ark together. They said Noah built the ark. Not these stone gods. And there was no mess about killing them two, no, no twins that were born to one of his, one of his son's wife. And no twin was born. And he said that when the twin was born, he, Noah was supposed to kill the twins. That's not in the word of God. So you got to read your Bible. You got to know what the word of God says. And Jesus said, I am the way, up, the truth, and the life. So when you're going through trouble, Jesus can help you to find some.